Hello and welcome. In our lesson today, I'm going to introduce the chapter Nutrition in Plants and Animals. Now, nutrition is a characteristic that is present in all living organisms. So this is a process whereby organisms, number one, acquire nutrients, that is obtain nutrients, and number two, use these nutrients for various body purposes. Now, when we talk about living organisms, living organisms are so diverse. We have so many different types of living organisms. So we cannot imagine that all of these will have a similar way of obtaining nutrients. Impossible. So different organisms have various ways of doing so. Now, this is what is termed as mode of nutrition. Now, a mode of nutrition is simply a way in which an organism obtains its nutrients. Now, this is broadly div uh, divided into two. We have autotrophism and heterotrophism. Now, let's start with the first one, autotrophism. Now, in autotrophism, organisms are capable of manufacturing their own food. How do they do this? They use simple molecules like carbon oxide, water, and a source of energy. Now, this source of energy can either be light from the sun or it can be energy from chemical reactions. So, just a brief summary. Autotrophism, this is whereby organisms manufacture their own food. They have that ability. And they use simple molecules like carbon oxide and water. Now, these, of course, are found from their immediate environment. Now, for this process to take place, of course, it requires energy. Now, energy can either be sourced from the sun, light energy, or it can be from chemical reactions. Now, organisms that have this magical ability of manufacturing their own food are known as autotrophs. So whenever you hear the term autotroph, this simply refers to an organism that can manufacture its own food. Now, autotrophs, you have plants, of course, plants are autotrophs, they manufacture their own food. You have some bacteria, so some bacteria can also do so. And lastly, you also have algae. Now, algae are a group of organisms that belong to kingdom Protoctista. So these three broad categories include organisms that have the ability to manufacture their own food, autotrophs. Now, when we talk about autotrophism, autotrophism can either use light energy or it can use energy from chemical reactions. So let's talk about the first one, photosynthesis. Now, photo refers to light, synthesis, manufacture of substances. So we're using light to manufacture food substances. Now, photosynthesis is a process that occurs in green plants. So what happens is that green plants have chlorophyll molecules. These are the green pigments that are present in leaves. Now, the chlorophyll molecules trap light from the sun, and then this light energy is converted to chemical energy for use during photosynthesis. So they are capable of manufacturing their own food using carbon oxide and water and light as a source of energy. This is photosynthesis. Now this is seen in green plants and algae too. Now remember when I talked about autotrophs, we mentioned plants, um, algae, and lastly bacteria. Now bacteria are not capable of carrying out photosynthesis, but they still manage to manufacture their own food. Where do they fall in? Chemosynthesis. So bacteria have this ability of manufacturing their own food, but instead of using light energy, as with the case of plants, they use chemical energy. So where do they obtain this energy? From chemical reactions. So they carry out certain chemical reactions which produce energy. And then they use this energy to manufacture their own food. Now this process is known as chemosynthesis. So we have two ways in which organisms manufacture their own processes, actually two processes. So we have photosynthesis, and lastly, and next, chemosynthesis. Summary, up to that point. So organisms have different ways of obtaining their nutrients. This is what is termed as mode of nutrition. Now, this is broadly divided into two, autotrophism, heterotrophism. Autotrophism is for organisms that can manufacture their own food. Now, they can do this through either of these two processes, photosynthesis, chemosynthesis. Photosynthesis occurs in green plants and algae. They use light energy to manufacture their own food. So they take carbon oxide, combine it with water and light energy, and voila, they have their food substances. Now, chemosynthesis, on the other hand, occurs in some bacteria. 
So they use energy from chemical reactions to manufacture food substances. And that is that. Now moving on to the next category, heterotrophism. Now, as you can imagine, if we talked about organisms that have the ability to manufacture their own food, that means that the rest that don't have this ability will fall under this mode of nutrition. So heterotrophism is for those organisms that cannot manufacture their own food. We fall under this category. So a heterotroph is an organism that cannot manufacture its own food substance. So what does it do? It relies either on plants or other organisms like animals. So in our case, we either feed on plants or we feed on other animals. So in short, we feed on other organisms. So we are heterotrophs. Now heterotrophs can be animals. They can also be uh, some bacteria. So some bacteria are autotrophic, others are heterotrophic. So they can also be some bacteria, protozoa, and lastly, fungi. Now let's pause there. I want to make something clear before we move on. We have five kingdoms. We have five kingdoms. So the simplest or the kingdom that contains the simplest organisms is kingdom Monera. This is where we have bacteria. Some bacteria are autotrophic. Others are heterotrophic. Moving on to the next kingdom, Protoctista. Now Protoctista can be broadly divided into two, where you have the algae and the protozoa. Now examples of algae are Euglena, Spirogyra, Chlamydomonas, these are photosynthetic, so that means they fall under autotrophism. Now, again, back to Protoctista, we also have a group of organisms called protozoa. So protozoa include the amoeba, the paramecium. These are heterotrophic. Moving on to the next kingdom, fungi. All fungi are heterotrophic, all of them. Moving on to the next one, plantae. Of course, these are autotrophs. And the last one, animalia. All animals are heterotrophic. Now, once we have that covered, let us now move on. If you are asking, why did I feel the need to point this out? Sometimes you get questions asking you, identify the kingdom whose members are all autotrophic or heterotrophic as such. So if you manage to get such questions, you're covered. Now, moving on. Heterotrophism. So heterotrophism is a mode of nutrition whereby organisms obtain complex food substances from other organisms. So they take in ready-made complex food substances from other organisms. And why do they do this? Because they don't have the ability to manufacture their own. So these are called heterotrophs. Now, heterotrophs can be divided into four groups according to the way they obtain their nutrients. So not all organisms, I mean not all heterotrophs, obtain their nutrients in a similar way. No. Now these are the four categories. Number one, we have holozoic, we have saprophytism, we have symbiosis, and we also have parasitism. So I'll be explaining briefly about each of these. So let's start with the first one, holozoic. Now holozoic is a mode of nutrition whereby organisms like mammals and birds, where they are, ingest solid food substances. So in our case, we eat solid food substances. We eat solid food. And then what happens to the food substances that we consume? They are digested. So they are broken down and then our bodies assimilate them. They use them for various processes. So holozoic is a mode of nutrition whereby solid food substances are ingested, digested, and then assimilated. Example, mammals and birds. Moving on to the next one, saprophytism. Now, saprophytism is a mode of nutrition whereby organisms obtain their nutrients from dead organic matter. Now, let me give an example. If you were to take a piece of bread, place it on a surface exposed to the surrounding, come back a few days later, what you'll note is that there is a substance that is growing on the surface of the bread. It could be greenish in color, and if it has matured, it turns darker, almost blackish in color. Now, that substance is actually a living organism, and that is a fungi. So the name of this fungi is rhizopus, or it's commonly known as bread mold. So you're finding that you have an organism that is feeding on dead organic matter, which in this case is bread. So it's obtaining its nutrients from the bread. Now, this is a saprophytic fungi. 
Now, another example is that of fruits. Same thing happens to fruits. If you have fruits lying about, you'll find that same thing happens. There's a substance that grows on them and slowly it feeds on the fruits until there's literally nothing left of it. So in the case of strawberries, look at what is happening to them. So you have the bread mold, which is called rhizopus, slowly feeding, slowly feeding on the strawberries until it has consumed all of it. So this is known as the rhizopus, and it's feeding on dead organic matter, which in this case are the strawberries. Now, when you talk about saprophytism, there are two organisms that can be saprophytes, bacteria and fungi. So we have saprophytic bacteria and saprophytic fungi. Now, an example of a saprophytic fungi is the rhizopus. Moving on to parasitism. Now, I believe that parasitism is something that uh, is familiar to a lot of us. So when you talk about parasitism, this is a mode of nutrition whereby one organism, the parasite, obtains nutrients from another organism, an unlucky fellow, who is the host. So it slowly obtains its nutrients and such from the host. Now you find that this is a disadvantageous relationship for the host. Why? Because it gets nothing from this relationship. Actually, the one who's benefiting in all the instances is the parasite. So the parasite obtains nutrients and in most cases, shelter. Now an example of a parasitic relationship is uh, that of the tick and cattle. So of course the tick is the parasite and the cattle, the host. Now also another example, that of tapeworms. So tapeworms are found in the intestines of mammals like human beings. So parasites. Moving on to the last one, which I have to admit is my favorite, symbiosis. Now, symbiosis is a mode of nutrition whereby organisms live together and mutually benefit one another. So this simply means that each provides something to the other. You know, they each brings something to the table. So I give you this and you give me that in return. Now, in such a case, you find that these organisms have to belong to different species. Why? Because if they want to belong to the same species, they will have the same attributes, the same features, and so on. So whatever one has, the other also has. So whatever one lacks, the other does too. So they belong to different species, and they each contribute to the other in different ways. Now, an example of a symbiotic relationship is that between rhizobium bacteria and leguminous plants. Okay, that's quite a lot. Let me, let me break it down. Leguminous plants simply refer to legumes, you know, like beans, peas, and such. Now, you find that in the roots of uh, legumes, there are certain rounded structures that are called root nodules. Now, within the nodules is where you have a species of bacteria called the rhizobium bacteria. Now, rhizobium bacteria obtain shelter and carbohydrates from the plant. Remember, this is a symbiotic relationship. So each uh, provides something and in return benefits in one way, in one way or the other. So the rhizobium bacteria obtain two things from the plant. They obtain uh, shelter and carbohydrates. Now, what do they give in return to the plants? They provide nitrates. Now, plants, as with all other organisms, require proteins. So they require nitrogen in order to manufacture proteins. But plants don't have the ability of taking nitrogen directly from the atmosphere and giving it. Even though nitrogen is abundant in the atmosphere, plants cannot naturally take it and use it. They don't have that ability. Rhizobium bacteria, on the other hand, do. So what do the bacteria do? They take nitrogen from the atmosphere, convert it to nitrates, and then share some of, them, some of these with the plants. So the plants are able to obtain nitrates, use these for the manufacture of protein. And that is a symbiotic relationship. Now, in case you are asked a question whereby you're told, state one example of a symbiotic relationship and explain, then this is how you'll do using this example. Mm -hmm. And there we have it. So this brings us to the end of our lesson today. I'll be uploading a video, another video, that discusses the external and internal structure of a leaf. Be sure to check it out and see you there.